Welcome to the third webinar within the Gibbs Cam 14 series, introducing Gibbs Cam 14 multitask machining. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a section for Q&A. Please use this section to ask any questions. We'll be answering your questions at the end of the presentation, and we will do our best to answer as many as we can. Any questions we aren't able to get to will be sent to an expert who will reach out to you directly. Today, you'll be learning how the new Gibbs Cam support, new Kinexmatic support for you access and swappable heads from turning from swappable heads from Andy Hefner application engineers for Gibbs Cam. With over 20 years of manufacturing experience, Andy started his experience with two German machine tool manufacturers, first Traub and DMG. Originally from Germany, Andy came to the U.S. over 30 years ago for Traub. Well, at both companies, he was calling and developing customer turnkey for their MTM multitask machinings. He has been with Gibbs Cam since 2001 and as an application engineer specialized specializing on MTM and Swiss type machines. At this time, I'd like to hand it over to Andy. Hello, uh, hello, this is Andy. Um, welcome and thank you for joining. I hope you all can hear me well. Um, yes, we're going to show today some UX is turning and Head swapping and uh, let me jump into it right away. All right. So UX is turning. This is something new we um, did in uh, Gibbscam 14. And what is UX is turning? A U axis is basically an additional axis on a tool spindle on a three axis mill, something like that, that usually doesn't have any turning capabilities. Um, so with that, we are adding turning capabilities to a mill with the U axis head. And what you see here, this is that U axis head on a three axis, four axis, even five axis mill. That's fine too. Okay. The U axis is actually in this particular head. We call this a U axis head as well. And if I may show you this real quick, we have a bunch of axes here. So the U axis is actually that slide here that we see here, right there. And if I slide this back and forth, this is our U axis, okay? which is basically an x-axis, but an additional x-axis called a u-axis on that head, while our c-axis, that piece rotates around while our u-axis is contouring our part. Okay, so that should give you a pretty good idea from the very get-go. And if you look at our part here right now, we should, I want to jump in right away so you get a pretty good idea what's happening. So this is actually our UX's head approaching our part, Let's speed it up a little bit. And we start now contouring this piece. So the piece is stationary. Our tools are turning in this case, of course, it's a turning tool, actually, so like by the uh, radius groove tool that rotates around the part, contouring the shape of the part. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit more so we don't have to wait, and, you know, until it's all done. So we're going to do a couple of operations with this, and I show you this you were right at the beginning. Um, so later on, we go into our tool description and things like that. Now we actually move a little bit, uh, do a little bit of radial groove that so basically we are applying our regular turning operations contouring roughing threading the normal stuff that we do in turning so right now it's all od or outside diameter turning this is the finishing path and now we are done with it i slow it down a little bit zoom a little out a little bit more now we're going to go to our 
threading tool. So this head, as you can see, actually has the capability to have two tools already in it. It's definitely doable. In this case, we don't even have to go through a tool changing motion. We can right away jump to our threading tool and do this. Again, I sped it up a little bit. So we do our threading, the regular single point threading could be tapered, you know, the regular stuff. Okay, once this is done, we're gonna switch to internal tools and put it down a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, now you see actually we have a single tool now in, in there. Um, and I will explain this later a little bit. Sorry about that. And we are turning our ID again using our UX system. While we actually like do this, we can have a good look again in case of what's happening. So our spindle is turning, or the tool spindle is turning, and our U axis is moving. Okay contouring of a part. All right. I think you got the picture. If I jump out of here and move on to our tool description. So here are operations over on the right hand side. Um, we have tool number five tool number three and tool number one being active. Basically, this one is the one that starts out with. <clears throat> I'm gonna get out of machine simulation and we're gonna have a real quick, we have a look at our tool. Quick. All right, that's what I wanted. All right, so what we do see here is our UX's head with our turning tool. So how do we set it up? We gonna set up the tool and I start over fresh. I'm gonna remove this real quick so we can talk about it, how it is uh, set up from scratch. So here we see our turning tool, nothing on it yet, just the tool itself. And, oops, excuse me. Let's do this again, there we go. So this is how we start out. Okay, so now I wanna add actually an intermediate tooling block, which is our U-axis head. I'm gonna click on this and I get automatically our C-axis and the U-axis and then an attach as well. So right now the tool attaches right there to the uh, body of that head, which I am not quite happy with. I'm gonna give it another intermediate tool and I call it attach any, and this is that multi or multi receptor block where I can put in my tool and the X plus my X axis and X negative axis, either way, um, whatever, whatever I think is best or my choice. Okay, so now it's in that uh, multiple uh, receptor block. Now I have to tell it what what do I want to do with it? All right, so here we have a C-axis, which is actually our rotational, rotational axis on that head. Typically, it by default, it comes at, as parked, okay? Okay, we're going to switch later on to interpolate it. This is what we need with this, but let's talk about um, the parked situation first and about this field over there. Okay, so those uh, options and checkboxes basically allow me to tell um, what do I want to do after I load this head from the tool change into the spindle. I can move my axis, let's say to uh, whatever, in this case, let's say 50 millimeters. I say my U axis, um, I want to afterload immediately after I loaded it into the tool spindle, I want to move it to a 50 millimeter or let's say two inches kind of position, positive or negative. And I can do the same thing before unload. Um, I leave it actually at zero. What that means, after or before I unload the head, from the tool spindle into our tool changer, I want to move this 
part of my U axis to zero to the center line again. So we are safe when I load it back into the tool changer. So I don't want to have it somewhere sticking out like 100, let's say, or, or let's say four inches or something like that. And it may not fit into my um, tool changer. Okay. I have another option. This is include in a, uh, include in extended MTG. So we can set it up. Okay, so we can have extended MTG and set it up. In this case, it's a rotational um, value. In this case, I just set it for 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 the heck of it to sixty degrees. Um, we have another one for this guy later. Um, there is, I think, this one. Also, C axis. We can basically change it around and include this one and determine in which position I want to move it when I load or unload the holder from the tool, uh, tool spin into our uh, tool changer. Okay, um, enough with that. Now I can switch. Actually, this is what we're going to use. We're going to use inter interpolated. And now I get a couple of more choices. So this one is set. We leave it the way it is. Now I have choices of what do I do when I approach the part? What is my strategy approaching my part? Not up here anymore. Once it's loaded, now I'm getting close to the part. And what do I want to do? Do I want to position it before my axis, machine axis, or do I want to position it right after machine axis? Let's say I approach the part. And I set it to after machine axis. That means I approach the part, get it close to it, and right before I start cutting, that's where I position it um, in the certain axis. And of course, then those numbers down here will kick in. The retract is pretty much the reverse way, right after I'm done with the operation. And at the retract, what do I want to do? Do I want to move it before? The machine axis or after the machine axis. Okay, so basically, if I set it position after, and now I can also give it a number, we have choices of no move, which is the most common one. We can set it to absolute, and that means if I want to position it before or after machine axis, before I start right cutting or right after it. I can position it to again, whatever, let's say 60 millimeters in absolute, or I can say, I want to do this incremental from wherever it is right now. Or if it's a C axis, like a rotational axis, like for this guy up here, I can give it uh, an angle, a short rotation, 60 degrees in this particular case, or I said to no move. So the common, most common part is actually to set it to a no move. If I need to move it, I will see it somewhere in machine simulation. Okay, so this was the quick explanation about the C axis. The next one is our U axis. We're going to do the same thing, interpolate it, um, position before or after. In this case, I set that, okay, to after load and before load into the tool, um, before unload into the tool spindle. I set it to zero. If I want, I can give it uh include mtg extended mtg and if i want to go to that mtg again see now with that box checked include extended mtg i get my u axis and i can park it at a number whatever i think is uh, appropriate or safe and um, so it gives me quite a few choices um to preset my UX is um, head. So here, same thing. No move is a good start. Okay. Um, now let's say I have in addition, I don't only have my C1 axis, this guy that rotates, but also I have on the tool spindle a C101 axis. Basically, my tool spindle can rotate um, as a programmable axis. <clears throat> With this one, remove from interpolation set, which is something internally an interpolation set. All those axes can't interpolate with each other. I can tell it, hey, I don't want my standard C axis to rotate. I want to have my this C axis or C1 
been doing the rotation. Okay, so um, this is basically how I set up um, my U axis head. Okay, so the <clears throat> U axis head also has to be stored in intermediate tooling and giving all those access uh, options, and then we can use it within um, Gibscan. Okay, so right here, <clears throat> very similar. This is the other side, the other tool that's in there. This is our threading tool. Um, again, same choices. And over here is this one, which is our internal. And there's a little bit of difference. See that little receptor here? It's a single receptor and I have set that up. Um, right in here, this is the single receptor and um, that's pretty much it. Okay. One thing I actually also wanted to say, let's go back one more time to my first tool. Come on. There we go. Okay. So the multi receptor, or I could basically this guy right here, there's one other thing and I can move it around. Let's say if I have to turn a big OD, and I already used the out the outermost actually uh receptor position, I still can offset that block further out. This is basically like I move now that block further out two inches or 50 millimeters. Um, I can basically like positive, negative. So just make it a little bit closer to the diameter that I'm gonna be use it and turn it with. Okay, all right. I think what we should do with this one, I go real quick to some of the operations. Since we are with that, actually, this is most the most common um, explanation or a question actually to how do I set up this head? So we done that. Now, basically, I just have my geometry and I set my machining markers, select the tool. So basically what we're doing, we're doing a contouring operation. Just as you know it, is it a phrase, uh, front phrase audio ID, as you know it from our regular tooling, uh, turning operations. So we go through each in individual operation. One, this one is doing the radial groove. And then over here, we finish it. Then we do our threading, okay? This is our threading um, menu, just the normal stuff, nothing out of the norm away from our um, regular turning operations. And here, we're gonna do our ID um, turning set our machining markers, set our axis, you know, as the normal way, feeds and speeds and so on. I increase the feed actually pretty high here, as you can tell, uh, because I wanted to go um, machine simulated relatively fast and not wait for too long while we are going through this webinar. Okay, so those are all the operations going through the part. And one more quickly, and then we switch to another part. Again, so here we are, our tools rotating around, and you see our <clears throat> UX is moving around. So, this actually explains it pretty much in detail. I want to show you now another part, also using that head, but a little bit something, a different variety. And let me switch over to this one. Give me a second. No, we don't want to save that. <clears throat> All right, here we have a different part. Okay, this is so, some kind of a flange, um, hydraulic flange, something like this, or valve. Actually, it's a valve body, and I split it in half so we could look inside. Um, and I want to switch right away to machine simulation. Okay. And here we are. So this is on a three axis lathe. And we're going to do turning using our U axis set. So basically, can you see it while we go through it? We're going to machine the right side, we're going to machine the, the uh, B part of this one, and then a little bit on the left side. But with that, we need to be able to flip it around. Okay, so I had set it up. 
I had set it up actually, so hold on, give me a sec. There we go. All right. So we use basically a, a right angle head, which I use to flip the head around and um slides. Okay. I'm gonna speed that up a little bit. So we are machining the face of that flange right there. So this flange, okay, we're gonna use also a later on for a part, or we are looking at something that's already familiar, but we are facing the part, contouring it, turning it um, with our UX's head. All right, let me slow it down. Okay, we turn the OD. All right, and after that, oops, it was a little fast. Let me slow it down. We set it to zero, we flip it around, and we do the ID. Okay, we are turning the ID, use another tool and put it on the center line. So it is quite a flexible piece that we have here um using the UX's head and the UX's turning capability within Gipscam. It's extremely powerful but also very simple to program. So we're gonna bring it around. Okay, now we must machine the internal part of it, okay, pointing down. <clears throat> Speed it up. Now we machine that taper. And out of this, you're going to switch the side of the flange. So just in one clamp of the parts. Part can be moved, it doesn't have to be refixed. In one clamp of the part, we're gonna flip the head over, um, use it for left side, right side, for machining, face, OD, internal, and so on. Okay, so the operations, again, and the tool setup is exactly as I showed you before. Um, nothing has changed there. Um, the operations, again, our turning operations as usual. Okay. Very well. So, this is our UX's turning. And of course, it can be used in all kinds of different applications, as you could imagine. With that, I want to move over to head swapping. Okay, head swapping is something also that's new with Skips Cam 14. Let me get out of that and switch over to our head swapping demo. So head swapping, probably people ask, what does that mean, head swapping? And I'm going to switch right away to machine simulation again. So you get, yes, okay, here we are, big machine. So head swapping what we mean by that head swapping is basically we are talking about heads like this big heads. So big machines have the capability to store different type of milling heads in parking box this red one over here where we can store those heads and pick up another one okay whatever machine you want to do Okay, and like you see, there's the magazine, we pick up the tool. But the key here is the head swapping out those heads, okay, from a, you know, let's look at it, our tool, you know, and move this aside a little bit. So, again, we use our UX's head, uh, since it's a nice combination to do that. It's actually the same thing we just saw. And what choices do I have? I have three choices. 
I have the AC head choice. Basically, it's an A axis and a C axis, both rotational axis. Then I have a no head choice. So basically, I'm not using a head at all. I'm basically clamping a tool right in the spindle, right up here in, in the spindle itself. Or the other one in this particular case is only a C axis. A C axis head doesn't have an A axis. Okay. All right. So simply by that, selecting my tool, telling it, aha, I want to use this turning tool. Um, I want to use that head, of course, this um, UX is turning head with a swappable head of either no B or C head. In this case, it's an AC head. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so the other ones is the no head and then I think the last one is again the AC head and the C head basically just drilling some holes. All right. Okay, with that said, I think we should let it run. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit so we get a little bit of an idea what's happening. All right, so now we see our tool spindle dropping whatever head that was that was in the spindle, dropped it off in its parking position. Picking up the AC head, and now it's coming over to our part, machining that same part that we just saw, and doing pretty much the same thing. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I want to see, did I set some stops? That is correct. I did set some stops, which is good. Okay, come on, move a little faster. There we go. All right, slow it down. We're done with that side. Now we flip it over, making sure we are not hitting anything. I moved it away. Now we come back, orient our U turning head. And now we come back to the part and machine it over here on the other side. All right. So, speeding it up again. <clears throat> I zoom out one more time because I want you to see what's happening next. So, we are done with this AC head. Now, we swap over to another head, which I think is the no head situation, I believe. Right. All right, there we go. Now we machine the front face of that part doing that turning again. And I speed it up again. So we run it a little faster. There we go. Done with this. Zoom out. Go down and again we swap our heads. So basically, the swapping of the head is driven simply by in the tool. What head do you want to use with this particular tool or that particular tool, and so on? This is basically swapping the head, and then the motion itself, those motions over here going into position, are done which is what we call a script language. So it's been the background in a script. In a script language that basically drives the machine components to the desired positions. And now we are doing something a little bit even more fancy. And I'm zooming in with this one. So we are turning actually there's this little hole on a taper on a compound taper and a compound angle. Okay. So it's a compound angle machining that hole. And if I call up our show position, we can see all those axes moving. So we have our Z1 axis moving. We have our U axis moving, doing the taper. We are moving in X axis and Y axis and in Z1 axis. Okay. So a lot of axes 
are moving around here. Let's speed it up again. So there was machining that little hole and we can swap that out again, slow it down. Positions it, stores it in the parking position, and then it picks up that the other block. And I think this one is a C-axis block. That is drilling our, our holes over here and flip around. and machine our holes over on that side and we are done. So, this actually describes pretty much our U-axis turning and our um, head swapping. So the head swapping is very, very simple. It's basically all embedded into the machine simulation. With that, I am at the end of my presentation. Um, we are about 35 minutes into it. Um, so I would like to turn it over to, let's see. Hold on. To test and maybe do some Q&A. Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Yes. Um, as You're Andy, <laughs> yeah. Um, Go ahead. Um, Thank you. As Andy mentioned, we would like to take to open the remainder of the time today to Q and A. As a reminder, please place any questions you have in the Q and A section at the bottom of your screen, and we will try to get to as many as we can. So, first question we have for you, Andy, is. Um, what type of machines can be used for turning with a U? this head with Gibbs cam. Um, okay, well, in general, it can be actually any three axis horizontal or vertical mill. So three axis, four axis, five axis mill, totally, totally fine. Um, or actually any machine with a tool spindle. This is probably the, uh, the way it describes it better. Any machine with a tool spindle, even a lathe, with a tool spindle can do UXs turning with Gibbs cam. So it's quite a nice variety we can do with our uh, UXs turning capability. Perfect. What yes. Gibbs cam modulars are required to enable U access turning? There's actually not, not that many that we need. We just need no turn. We need to be able, be able to mill and of course have turning tools and MTM level one. Those are the ones that are required to be able to utilize lace tools on a mill. So basically we need to be able to basically to do the lace tools, this, those guys over here. <clears throat> of course, in the mill, we have our regular tools, our mills and stuff, but now we need to be able to show the lace tools so we can do UX turning um, on a mill. And those are the requirements, nothing more. The rest is done internally, which we call the MDD or machine manager. That's pretty much it. Perfect. Um, is there going to be talk on the new additive manufacturing portion of Gibbs Cam 14? Um, there will be at some point, I don't think there will be it. Um, there will be a demo or another webinar this year um, because we are pretty much running out of time and the end of the year is um, is around, but uh, and I don't know directly if okay, if that when that will be done. Okay, so but yes, okay, there is probably definitely something coming up in that direction with um, um, additive machining within Gibbs Cam. Perfect. Um, what taper is the head? <laughs> okay, what taper is the head? It really does not matter. That's actually all. I'm actually like okay. What taper is the head? It it doesn't really matter. It could be a cut forty. It could be um, it could be a a capto HSK. Anything that 
the machine basically can handle and of course it will be then uh, on that particular head this one this is actually particular this is the the capto head is it a capto five maybe um depends on the size of course but this is basically what the gentleman is asking um what they uh, what type of uh table that is so anything is anything is doable anything okay. <laughs> we, don't, we don't limit it okay how is the u access head connecting to the machine interface um there is some mechanical um attachments that drive maybe i should switch back to that other program real quick and this we, we don't really see it um because every machine has a little bit a different um attachment to it um i'm not finished yet let me see if i can get the machine real quick up okay so there is some mechanical attachment on the side of this single somewhere here in that area that will drive um there's a link to it and that will drive that ux is head while the, the 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 part is rotating or the tool is rotating not the part okay so this is how it's linked it's just not being shown here in machine simulation because machines different machines have different adapt uh, uh, adaptions okay Okay. Okay. Um, what are the machine requirements to be able to do the uh, U access turning? Um, well, it's the, the most actually, yeah, uh, what are the, mach the, the, the requirements on a machine? Well, first of all, I guess the most important is that the machine uh, control can um, can handle actually the additional access. I think this is one of the first things that get that or most important things. If the control has not has, doesn't have the capability to handle U access or any additional access, then of course okay there is the limit already there. So if the machine has that capability to um, add additional access to it, like in this case a U access, then um, this is basically the minimum requirement um, to, to be able to do that. Perfect. Yep. Is a post update required to support U access turning? Yes, there is. Um, the, it needs a post uh, um, update. Uh, of course, it's done by our post department. Mm -hmm. And since we are talking about this, I have not even shown you that. That reminds me. <laughs> okay, if mm -hmm. I may. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's process. And this is the code. So basically, this is a post that we did for um, a particular head. And here you see um, it needs to have the post update, which actually answers that question. And here is our U axis um, output that is required to, you know, of course, drive the U axis. Okay. So, yes, there is a post upgrade necessary, definitely. Perfect. We just have a couple more questions um, that we have time for. So, um, where in Gibbs Cam are the swappable heads located or stored? Oh, okay. Uh, yes, okay. They actually are embedded in the machine installation. Um, yes, okay. So, they are they're basically stored somewhere in the machine simulation model, in the machine, machine sim model, and then basically being picked up by just be calling them okay with our tools mm -hmm. and then the machine or the spindle goes over and picks up the head over there but they are actually embedded in the machine simulation okay okay is the machine simulation required for programming the swappable heads yes it is um because there's so many components um there with the head being head spring pretty big and then of course the parking area where it's being parked and then of course where is the machine where is the um the head being moved around the tree so it wants to we want to see really where where there are possible collisions um with the part or even with the machine itself um that's why a machine simulation is required to uh 
to really show the swappable heads and program it properly. Perfect. Well, that is all the time we have today. Um, thank you, Andy, for your time and for educating us on this subject. We really appreciate it. Um, so we all hope that this information has been of value to you. Um, if you asked a question and it wasn't answered in our live Q&A, we'll reach out to you shortly. I'd also like to invite you to learn more about our upcoming series for Gibbs Camp 14. We have one more to close out the year, um, and you can find them all in a link that I'll post in our chat session. Uh, section. So thank you again, and have a great rest of your day.